Hi, and welcome back to Broadsheet Sydney Around Town. If it's your first time here, don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss a video. I'm Emma Joyce, Features Editor at Broadsheet, and I host this short guide to Sydney. Let's get into it. There's an elegant new Mexican restaurant in Glebe that's opened by a husband and wife team who already have a taqueria in Piermont. And I believe this place is called New. I think that's how it's pronounced. Broadsheet contributor Callum McDermott is here and he has interviewed the owners. I believe you've also been into the restaurant. Yep. It was great. It's really great. Mm -hmm. So this particular place... I know from your story in Broadsheet, you've said there are dishes that people might not recognize as being Mexican. Can you explain why that is? The owners of the restaurant, um, husband and wife and business partners, Manuel and Diana, they're both from a state to the south of Mexico called Oaxaca. Um, In recent years, Oaxaca has become a lot more well-known in the public imagination, largely because of you know, the influence of mezcal becoming more of a thing, especially in Sydney. But it still has a kind of cuisine that it exports that doesn't resemble a lot of the more, you know, northern Mexican style. And that's not even Tex-Mex or anything, just more of the northern Mexican style cuisine that we typically associate with a lot of um, Mexican restaurants, especially in Sydney. You know, uh, lots of tacos, uh, In recent years, Mexico City street food, things like tortas or, Mm -hmm. you know, cheesy quesadillas and all that sort of thing of really, you know, birria tacos, all that kind of thing have really taken off. And Oaxacan cuisine is a lot more distinct and shows a lot more pre-Hispanic influences. So it's a very different kind of Mexican food. And this is where the owners are from. They grew up in Oaxaca. Yeah, absolutely. So... Manuel is from Oaxaca, grew up his whole life there. And um, Diana is from Chiapas, which is a state next to Oaxaca, but moved there very young. And they both grew up there before moving to Sydney. If people aren't familiar with them already, they have their first venue is in Piermont and it's more like a, a takeaway place. You can sit outside, I believe, and they've they do tacos. They do kind of the talk, the kind of cuisine you've mentioned that people might expect from Mexico. What is that particular venue like? Yeah, Nativo, which uh, was their first venue, is um, there's only something like as you mentioned, fourteen seats or something, and um, there are all sorts of tacos um, that regularly rotate. I guess one of its cool selling points is that you've got Manuel, who has a very extensive um, career, having worked in. Some of Mexico City's best restaurants, like with the legendary chef Patricia Quintana and um, in some Michelin star restaurants in France. So he's creating some really high level tacos that incorporate a lot of Australian ingredients like salt bush and pepperberry and native ingredients. That's kind of where Nativo comes in. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the food on the menu at Nativo is a lot more recognizable instantly. Um, but again, the feelings are much more imaginative and maybe less traditional than what we're getting at new. So why did Diane and Manuel want to open a second restaurant and and take it in in a different direction entirely? I think Nativo in many ways proved that there was some kind of an appetite for more traditional Mexican and Sydney in general, I think, performs extremely well in the Australian context. You've got, you know, Alejandro Huerta and Rosa Cienfuegos and all sorts of excellent Mexican chefs that are really sort of representing their culture and their traditions really well. Um, So I think Diana and Manuel always wanted to open this restaurant. It was just a case of, you know, within the context of labor shortages and inflation and tendencies and all that really fun, you know, business stuff. They were just waiting for the right opportunity and this Glebe Point Road place really does feel like the right place at the right time for them. This new place from the images I've seen, it's in a Victorian terrace and it looks like it's got really beautiful paired back fit out. What does it look like inside? So coming in, it's just a classic Glee Point Road terrace, obviously. Um, inside, it's a very sort of really earthy colour palette. Um, I mentioned in the story that Nu is a mixed tech um, indigenous sort of Mexican word for earth and ground and that has really extended to the palette and the tone of the venue 
um, just lots of brown tones and it just feels very homey and they were explicitly trying to go for a casual, um, unfussy sort of space. You've mentioned that the word means kind of ground or earth. Is that translated into the menu? What what is What is the food that we can order here? Yeah, so as I mentioned, it's all about Oaxaca. Um, so Southern Mexican cuisine, um, lots of pre-Hispanic influences, how that shows up on the menu. Um, mole, which is one of Mexico's best known and definitely a point of pride for their culture. It's a type of dish or sauce. Some people call it a sauce. Lots of people call it a dish because of its complexity. And Oaxaca in particular is known for, you know, it's seven different kinds of mole. So there are some that are bright green, others that are, you know, a big, like deep crimson. It'll really vary depending on, you know, what sort of chilies and what's being put into it. The one that features the most prominently at Nu is a recipe that was passed down to Manuel by his grandmother. It's a very involved process. I think your story said 40 ingredients. Yeah. He mentioned that there are 40 different ingredients and it kind of takes, depending on your definition, between, you know, a week or a month to make it because essentially he combines all these different kinds of chilies and nuts and fruits and bread and Oaxacan chocolate and all kinds of different things into one base, which is called a mole madre, which, you know, is a mother mole, mm. a lot like a sourdough mother. And then that base takes a long time to create and using that as a base that he then, then creates the sauce out of it with chicken stock and all sorts of fresh ingredients. And that takes several days as well. And um, that features all over the menu, whether it's on um, the pork belly or the emeladas where it covers chicken in tortillas. Um, it's just a really like extremely complex sauce. And one of my favorite things to do when I go out is order something that I would never in a million years have a chance of being able to replicate at home. That's a very good kind of rule to live by, I think. Yeah. And so when I see a 40 ingredient sauce, um, my interest is immediately. <laughs> I'm not going to make that at home. Yeah, exactly. I don't have a spare month at the moment. So, what What's behind the bar and what is the kind of the best order for, in your opinion? Yeah, absolutely. So Diana Ferreira, who's Manuel's business partner, she's an expert in Mezcal in Oaxaca City. She got certified in, you know, how to serve it and is a mezcologist. Um, I believe Australia's only mezcologist. Yeah, certainly the only one I've ever that come we've across. Probably, yeah, um, we've heard of. And mezcal, it's one of those classic things where a lot of different states in Mexico claim it, but in my opinion, Oaxaca definitely makes the most compelling argument for the ownership of mezcal, at least um, in terms of how many producers there are alone. Um, and Diana is extremely good at working with these small batch mezcal producers. Um, the reason the lineup changes so often is because most of the bottles she was able to source are only 250 mils at a mm. time. So it's so extremely rare, basically, for, yeah. for anyone in Sydney, certainly being able to taste these particular mezcals. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's very changeable as well. So there are, you know, always mezcals that you can try neat, but, um, in terms of what you'll always be able to order, she's created uh, a list of mezcal-based cocktails that she calls mezcalinas. And as you mentioned, they're pretty much all, all of the stories behind them are inspired and flavor profiles are inspired by famous Oaxacan women, some of whom uh, were real, others are just more folkloric. So there's the Princesa Donaghy, who appears on the state seal of Oaxaca and, um, the story goes that she was in a relationship with a conqueror. Um, that didn't go so well and she ended up getting beheaded. And in the drink, because it's based on a Oaxacan drink, um, there's a lot of grenadine put into it to simulate the blood of her losing her head. Yeah, I really wondered where that was going to go with some beheading. <laughs> yeah. But it it's as gruesome as it sounds. Can't wait for my next one. Delicious? Yep. 
Well, thanks so much for telling us about it. I feel like you've got a wealth of knowledge and we could go on for many more minutes than we have time for. Well, you can find new at 29 Glebe Point Road in Glebe. Thanks, Cal. Thank you. I think it goes without saying that a convenience store should be convenient. So it's probably one that's located near to you. I think there is an exception in Sydney, which is maybe the most famous convenience store in the country. Redfern Convenience Store is somewhere that has a, a crazy number of followers across Instagram, TikTok, anywhere really. And the reason that it's so famous is it's stocked. Every single shelf is stocked with something, a little treat from somewhere around the world. And whether you're from Egypt or Canada or in the UK, you can find something in store that sparks a bit of joy. It reminds you of home. Now, in news we didn't expect, Redfern Convenience Store is opening a second location, but it's keeping its name. Is that right, Carl? Yes, it is. So uh, you'll now be able to find Redfern Convenience Store where? In Newtown. Okay. Redfern Convenience Store in Newtown. And that's not going to get confusing at all, is it? I'm sure it won't. <laughs> now, owner Hazem Cedar has said that the reason that he wants to keep the name is because it's such a, an important part of his branding. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, can you give us a kind of idea of the brand that he's created and what Redfern Convenience Store is really well known for? Hazem said uh, took over Redfern Convenience Store um, in around 2006 from his father, Aliata, who arrived in Australia around 2000 and founded the shop in 2001. And from about 2001 to 2006, it was a very conventional convenience store. If you needed milk and you lived around the corner. It was, was convenient. It was convenient. Hazem, a few years into running the shop, decided to give it a social media presence. And at the time, everyone told him, why are you getting a social media account on Instagram, on Facebook for your convenience store? Those things never get follows. And he decided that he'd commit to the bit and aggressively try to make his convenience store a thing. And he obviously paired that with, as you mentioned, a really, really great range of products. But by just diligently saying and repeating and reiterating that Redfern Convenience Store was the greatest convenience store on earth, somewhere along the way, it probably actually became the greatest convenience store on earth. And now... It's a tagline that's really hard to argue against. Yeah. And, you know, when I was writing this story, it was very confusing because sometimes he refers to it as the greatest convenience store on earth. Other times he refers to it as the greatest Redfern convenience store on earth. And yeah, I think at this point, it's, it's pretty safe to say that, yeah, both of those claims are completely true. And he even has an in-store radio. Just like you get at a big chain supermarket, Redfern convenience store has its own radio station um, <laughs> with its own programming and its own ads that advertise Redfern Convenience Store's own products. If you're noticing a theme emerge, uh, the term Redfern Convenience Store gets repeated a lot. And so I think <laughs> going back to what we were saying, um, when it came time to open a new location and it's the first new shop in the history of, of him running Redfern Convenience Store, um, he dispensed with tradition, did not call it Newtown Convenience Store and just decided to open another Redfern convenience store. Now, this place is going to be next to Bella Bruta, opposite um, Marley Hotel. It will be a real, it will be kind of like a spacious convenience store, a little bit like Redfern's is. Will there be any kind of key differences? Will there be any items stocked there that you can't get at the other location? As far as I can discern, um, there are going to be no differences whatsoever. Um, King Street is a little bit more of a destination than Redfern Street. So that comes along with higher rents and all that sort of thing. So the biggest difference is that maybe things might cost a little bit more, but he's assured me that he's going to do everything within his power to make sure that there's parity of prices between the two locations. Now, in your story for Broadsheet, you mentioned that there's a personal connection to this particular location. Redfern Convenience Store, Newtown, was always a convenience store. And when 
Hazem's father arrived in Australia from Palestine in 2000. One of the first jobs he got was working at this convenience store in Newtown. Um, and for many years afterwards, even after Hazem's father had founded Redfern Convenience Store, he always used the Newtown store as the benchmark of what a convenience store should look like. So in many ways, the original Redfern Convenience Store was modelled off what that Newtown convenience store looked like. And so the opportunity to lease it all those years later, I think was pretty irresistible. Um, and um, Hazem's father is certainly pretty happy about the whole outcome. Do we know which one he'll spend most time at? <laughs> he says he wants to split his time equally between the two, um, unless he has figured out a way to clone himself. He I, loves both children equally, basically. Yeah, he refused to to really name a favourite. Um, and, yeah, I think there's every chance that this new new location for Redfern Convenience Store is going to become just as iconic as the original, especially given the location. So when is it opening? I think the safest guarantee is by the end of August, maybe, maybe, maybe early September, but very, very soon. Well, I look forward to visiting as soon as it does open. It's open at 137 King Street in Newtown sometime at the end of August, early September. Thanks, Cal. Thank you. And that's all we have time for today. As always, you can keep up to date with what's happening around Sydney at broadsheet.com.au and on Instagram at broadsheet underscore Sid. I'll be back next week. Same time, same place. Chat then.